Okay, we are back on building this predator. You saw me do the video uh, pointing out the differences between the predator and some of the other Honda clone type engines. We're back on building this thing. We've got it all cleaned up. Uh, we've got the cylinder home. Nice cross hatch. Knock down the peaks. Um, it was a brand new engine, but I like to put my own finish on it anyway. You can see a little dirt in there. We'll get that cleaned up. Assemble it. Got the bearings in there, the block and the side cover, as well as the seals. Nothing really interesting to, to see there. It's not really a big deal, but uh, maybe I'll do a short or something sometime on installing those. Got the side cover drilled and tapped for a crankcase vent. That's just 1 8 pipe or 1 8 NPT. Just get a correct drill size, drill a hole, and tap it and put in your fitting. Pretty simple. We also have to fill in the holes where the governor hardware was. A lot of people just take a 20 quarter bolt and just run the thing in there and self tap it. I've already ran a tap through these before I cleaned up the block. I use like a button head type a screw. I put some red Loctite on it, seal it up, make sure it's never going to come out. Just tighten it up, and then I'm going to do the same over here on this side here. And we also have this hole here in the side of the block where the oil level sensor wire passed through. There's like a, a nut in the fitting there. I tap that for 7 16 20, and I just get this short half inch long screw here. Run that in with some red Loctite. And seal it up. I was putting a copper sealing washer on there, but the red Loctite seals it up good enough. So getting rid of that washer is one less part. And I'm kind of like uh, the whole Tesla SpaceX engineering model, you know. The best part is no part. If you can get away without an extra component, that's one less failure point. The other thing I do on all my fasteners is I use this cross check here. This is basically just a uh, witness that you put on the bolt head and it lets you know if it's come loose on its own or somebody's taken it loose. And you know I sell these engines to people in the public and sometimes they may take them apart and then mess them up and come back and tell me that I messed it up. This way I know if they've taken it apart. Something kind of interesting here. I've got my 6254 ARC rod that is for the uh, Predator crankshaft journal, but I've got this Tillotson flat top piston. Now, normally a Tillotson uses a different size wrist pin than a Predator, except for when you get into this flat top, what they call their racing piston or whatever the heck it is. It is a uh, 709 wrist pin, same as a Predator. So I like the quality of this better than the flat top that I had made for the Predator. The compression height's not quite the same, but I've got some different length rods. So I'm gonna start with this one see where this puts us for the projection height of the piston, whether it's below the deck, above the deck, even with the deck, and then see if I need to try a different rod, and we're going to find out. That piston sits slightly below the top of the deck. I'm going to measure that. I'm probably going to do it off camera here and see where it's at, and then decide what rod I need. Let's see if we can make happen. Okay, I measured the uh, distance from the top of the deck and the top of the piston, and it's right at 28 thousandths or 30 thousandths. Now I've got two rod choices. I've got a plus 20 and a plus 40. The plus 40 is going to put me out of the deck a little bit, and I don't think I want that. I want it as close to the top as I can get it. So I'm going to go with the plus 20, and that's going to put me about 8 thousandths deep. And then I'll play with my head gasket a little bit and try to get my uh, 30 thousandths quench clearance between the top of the piston and the quench pad on the head. And I'll explain that a little more as I get into it. This is the rod we're going to use. It's an ARC 6256, and it's 20 thousandths longer. So it's going to bring that piston up just a little closer to the deck where I want it. Another thing to check is ring end gap. Got the rings in there. I've got them squared up. I can slide a 10,000 feeler gauge in there 
and I got a little bit of slot, so I'm guessing it's probably around 12 thousandths. That is absolutely about where I want to be. So I don't think I'm going to have to file these rings at all. We should be good to go. Okay, and now that we've got this installed with the 20 thousandths longer rod, I've got a support on the crankshaft, so it's been held in there straight now. And with a piston at top dead center, we're about 18 thousandths from the top of the deck. Now, I could install the 40 thousandths longer rod and put us, you know, a couple thousandths above the deck. But what I think I'm going to do is I'm going to leave it there with a 10 thousandths head gasket. That's going to give us about 28 thousandths quench. That's close enough to 30 thousandths for me. And that'll achieve what I want to achieve. And we'll talk about that a little bit later. But uh, right now, I need a camshaft. And that is on a UPS truck waiting to come from, to me from uh, Iskandarian down in Gardena. We've already get that installed, along with some new lifters, and get the side cover on, check our crankshaft end play, and button this thing up and put a flywheel on it and a coil. We'll have ourselves a short line.